right, everybody, welcome to the next lecture. And here we are going to start discussing infrared spectroscopy. So the last lecture, the last lecture dealt with mass spec. Now we're doing IR before we move on to NMR, which is going to take up the bulk of time when you're solving unknown spectra. So in terms of IR, uh, I want to break this down into two parts because you tend to have a large range in which you can find bands. And we want to look at each of those sections sort of individually because they contain different functional, functional groups and functionalities. So infrared waves, when we start looking at them in terms of an energy scale, they're below the visible region. So if you think about red, the term infrared, right? Red is the very cusp or beginning of the visible light region that we can see with our eyes. Um, and then it ranges all the way down into the microwave region, which is then when we get into microwaves, we start talking about the ability to rotate molecules. And once you move up into IR, you have the ability to stretch and bend molecules. So molecules, when they start stretching, they can stretch symmetrically. So if you take a bond or you think of like two bonds, they can both be moving out and then back. So something like that would look similar to, let's say that we have something like this. So the circles represent the atoms and then the lines represent the bonds. You could have a symmetrical stretch where you're going either out like this or you're coming back like this. Think of it almost like a slinky. Okay. And then you can also have an asymmetric stretch where one of them is going out and then the other one is coming back. And when you have something like that, you've got the asymmetric stretching. And then you can also have bending. So if you take your two fingers and you hold them up almost like you're making a peace sign, you can have the bending where they go in the plane. So in that case, make your hand act like scissors and the two fingers going against one another. That's scissor behavior. And then you can also have it what's called bending where they are rocking. So the rocking, if you take them and instead of sort of scissoring them together, you move them both in the same direction, almost like you're wagging your fingers back and forth. Okay. And then you can have in and out of the um, I'm sorry, you can have out of the plane, which is where you move your fingers up and down, okay? Or you can move one up and one down. That's like a twisting motion. So that's what can happen with the bonds when they're exposed to IR energy. Now, why is any of this useful? It's useful because it can determine the presence of different functional groups. So when we have functional groups, they're going to have different types of bonds. So for instance, an alcohol would have an OH bond that's going to have its own unique stretching frequency in terms of how fast it vibrates back and forth, right? So going back to like that idea that these are slinkies or something like that with bowling balls or weights on the end of them, the atoms have different weights. And if you pull back on a spring and then you let go, and it's got a different weight attached, well, the back and forth oscillation motion is going to vary depending on the mass of the actual atom that's attached to that spring, you know, and then you have certain springs that are looser and others that are tighter in terms of double bonds, triple bonds, etc. So um, when we get ready to take a look at functional groups on IR, it is very common, almost every course that you're going to see will report it in wave numbers. So this is an inverse centimeter. You may see on the x axis the centimeter minus one. And a wave number is just a way of reporting the um, wavelength in an inverted fashion like that. So you can actually go through and use a 10 to the seventh multiplier and you can bring this back up and then you can look at the frequencies or the energy involved with your um, wave numbers, okay? So what we really wanna look at in terms of solving, that was a little bit of background, but the main point of this course is to solve the actual IRs and put them in reference to an unknown compound. So that background information isn't really gonna help you with determining the IRs as much as knowing the different regions will. So you could look at an IR as a whole, but I like to usually tell students to break it down into four major regions. You have the above 3000 wave number region, then you have 3000 to 2000, 2000 to 1000, and then below 1000. And below 1000 is known as the fingerprint region. It's really below 1500 if you ask a lot of people, 
but especially once you get to 1000 um, the usefulness of the bands start to dissipate and it becomes a very messy region and the whole reason it's called the fingerprint region is exactly because it is like a fingerprint it's unique to each compound so each compound is going to have its own set of uh, peaks and vibrational stretches when you get down to that point uh, it tends to get complicated so we're going to break this into two lectures the first lecture is going to cover the above 3000 and between 2000 to 3000 and then the second lecture will focus on the 1000 to 2000 and below 1000 so above the 3000 region this is a very important distinguishing uh, area in an IR and that is because right below, and I do mean right below the 3000 region, is where you are going to find regular CH stretching. Now, what do I mean by regular? I mean that you will find the aliphatic SP3 standard hydrocarbon stretch. So think of like methyl groups, CH2, which is a methylene group. Your regular CH stretching that's going to be present in pretty much every single organic compound will be there. But as soon as you cross the threshold into the 3000 region, you start finding more unique functionalities that can be important in determining a structure. So there are three major ones that appear in this region. Let's discuss them. The first one is the CH bond stretch. Now this CH, different from the one we just spoke of, is going to be the hydrogens attached to aromatic rings alkenes and alkynes right now this can range from 3020 so just a hair above 3000 all the way up to 3300 and it turns out that usually the aromatic and the alkenes are going to be closer to the 3020 they usually will go all the way up to maybe like 3100 okay and then when you start getting above that all the way up to 3300 that tends to be for the alkynes here, all right? They have a typically a slightly higher um, wave number when you look at the CH stretch. Now, another thing to point out, this is the CH stretch. So let's use an alkyne for an example. For an alkyne, you have a carbon-carbon triple bond and then you have a hydrogen. The carbon-carbon triple bond has its own frequency that we'll look at soon. But this wave number we're referring to here is for this stretch. It's for a carbon-hydrogen that is attached to a carbon-carbon triple bond. That's what we're looking at in this region. And pretty much all of the stretches that are in the above 3000 region deal with hydrogens that are attached to other atoms. All right. So number two, we have the amine. So we have the NH bonds and they will stretch in the region of usually 3100 to 3500. Now something that's important here is that if you have a primary amine, it's going to show two peaks. So primary means that it is going to be an amine that has two hydrogens on it like this, right? That would be primary and then you have some R group. You could also have a secondary amine and a secondary amine would be one that's in between the two alkyl groups and that one would just have the one hydrogen here so a secondary amine only has the one NH so you're only going to see one peak whereas we have the two NH bonds here so you'll get two peaks due to this and you can have the symmetric and the asymmetric all right now when we look for that again it's in the 3100 to 3500 region the alcohols also show up in this region, which we'll take a look at in a second. When you look at amines, they tend to be a little, um, how should I put this? They're not as strong as the alcohol peaks. So when you see an alcohol peak, it's like it smacks you in the face. It's very broad, it's rounded, and it is very, very strong. It dips down towards the x-axis. The amines can have somewhat strong signals but they tend to air closer to the medium side than on the super strong side all right and then the oh bond for alcohols and technically carboxylic acids too okay the oh bond stretch is going to be from 3200 to 3500 now that's specifically for an alcohol when you get a carboxylic acid and we will look at this as we proceed forward with this series when you get a carboxylic acid, it can range all the way down to 2,500. So you get this massive peak, 
and sometimes it doesn't even look like a peak it almost just looks like this giant like bubble with little shard peaks coming off of it that hangs out in the top left portion of the IR and it definitely can dip into the uh, 2000 region when you're looking at that so you'll see the difference between a carboxylic acid peak and an alcohol peak as you continue to practice here and if you're ever in question about that when you have your HNMR present you can always look on the HNMR for a carboxylic acid peak because they are the only peaks that appear in the 11 to 12 ppm region they are very very high on the ppm scale when you look at the proton NMRs so it's easy to sort of spot check yourself and see if you're questioning all right now let's take a look so here's an example where we have peaks that are just present above 3000 so this would be similar for an aromatic or an alkene now look at the dividing line here that's drawn in red right so here's the 3000 mark and then you can see there are some peaks that are shouldering to the left of the 3000 mark that is representative of the CH stretching that you would find for aromatics or alkenes. Now, similarly, take a look over here, right? So you can definitely see peaks that are below that 3000 mark. Those are for the regular CH peaks, right? So if I had something that was like CH3, CH2, it's not involved in any type of functionality uh, in terms of double bonds or triple bonds. Those CH stretches are found on the right hand side of that 3000 region very important distinguishing uh, mark all right so then take a look at this one this is for a primary amine so you can see these peaks they don't come down as strong as the CH stretching does here right but they're noticeable and you can see two distinct ones in this case so there are two distinct peaks and this would be for a primary amine because the primary amine has the double stretch right you've got the symmetric stretch and then you've got an asymmetric stretch that can occur and that breaks it apart into the two different peaks that you'll see due to those vibrations so that's an example of a primary amine and if you had a secondary amine you would just see one peak but it would be similar in strength and similar in location so note here this is 3100 right so it's above that you're 32 here 33 so you're looking at somewhere around probably 3300 that this amine is currently showing up. All right. And then if we take a look here, this is a classic example of an alcohol. Look at the amine and then look at the alcohol. It is very evident when you have an alcohol present. This is the type of grouping you'll see. Now maybe it'll be not quite as strong as this. This one is particularly strong but you will still always see something even if it's not as strong that comes down into a rounded type of fashion like that it is very broad and rounded when you're looking for it so this would be an alcohol stretch and again if you had a carboxylic acid it might come down to something like here but then you're gonna basically see it sort of go all the way up into something like that that's probably a little too far because I went to 2000 but something right kind of like that and it definitely crosses that 3000 threshold now I made this nice and round sometimes you're gonna kind of see like peaks that come off of this small peaks that are jagged like that all right and if you see any behavior like that that's more likely a carboxylic acid whereas the alcohol stays in that above 3000 region and it comes into a very rounded peak like you see here all right so that's the above 3000 region now what happens when we move below that into the 3000 to 2000 region well number one and we've discussed this at length now we have all of the CH stretching from the aliphatic this should be sp3 okay hybridized carbons and that is from around 2800 2850 to 2950 but it is below 3000 take that note there right it's an important marker it is below 3000 when we see those okay now the other thing that appears in this region that is very distinct and important is you can get nitrile and alkyne triple bond stretching so the 2000 to 3000 region is home to the triple bond stretches both the carbon carbon triple bond and the carbon nitrogen triple bond 
So when you take a look at that, all right, you're going to find that the stretch is usually in the 2100 to 2250 region. And the alkyne is usually going to be on the lower end. So alkynes will be usually um, somewhere around 2100 to 2200. And then when you have the nitrile group, the cyano group, that's usually going to be the 2200 to 2250. All right, and you'll see I have there above 2200. So an example of this would be this nitrile. Look at how strong this is right here. You've got a strong peak, and this is clearly, here's 2000, here's 2100 that I'm marking off, here's 2200, right, and here's 2300, uh, where that second red line is to the left. So you can see this is falling just slightly above 2200, but not as high as 2300. This is a classic example of a carbon nitrogen vibration mode. All right, so that pretty much covers what we would find in those regions. The um, 20, the 2000 to 3000 region is absent of a lot of peaks in comparison to some of the other regions that we see. But it is very important to note that you can find those triple bonds in that region. That's the main focus there. So that's going to conclude the part one, and in part two, we'll come back to look at the 1000 to 2000 region and then briefly discuss the fingerprint region. And the most important part in that 2000 to 1000 region is the carbonyl peaks. So we'll take a look at that and we will catch up with you guys next time.